Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's Tell Us How to Make It Better podcast. When you are designing or building a house, how much thought are you putting into the garage? If you're like me, the answer is probably not much. And the builder doesn't usually talk it up. You kind of just get what they give you when everything is done, and that's your space. And what it ends up being is a, a big storage area for everything that doesn't fit in the house. And in many instances, you can't even get both of your cars in, so it can become a worthless space for you. My guest today is Aaron Cash, and his job is to take that disorganized clutter mess that you might be calling your garage and turn it into a great space. I'm George Siegel, and this is the Tell Us How to Make It Better podcast. Your home is probably your biggest investment, and every week we show you warning signs and solutions to help you protect it. Tell Us How to Make It Better is partnering with The Readiness Lab, the home for podcasts, webinars, and training in the field of emergency and disaster services. Aaron, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. Now, garages to me are one of can be one of the coolest features of a house. The problem for people like me and a lot of other people, by the time we get to that, we've kind of run out of money. So we end up just using it for garbage rather than garage. But you have great ways of turning that around. Tell us what you do to make garages look so great. Yeah, absolutely. So our business is really focused on maximizing the garage space and the value of the garage space for our clients. And that typically entails us coming up with a custom solution to not use the garage as you, as you suggested, sort of as a dumping ground or as a, um, an area that really has very little value in use. So we do that with a number of ways with products like our cabinetry, our floor text coating, wall organizers, but more than just the products and services, is we create the solution that uh, really improves the space, increases the value for the homeowner and, uh, you know, in, improves their lifestyle. And one of the things my wife and I do when we're walking through the neighborhood is when you see a garage door open, I mean, naturally you look up and you can tell the ones that seem organized versus the ones that just everything is thrown in there like they're hoarders. Um, psychologically, having that room in order can make a big difference for people, can it? I mean, it really does set the tone for every time you come in and go out of your house if you're going through the garage. Absolutely. So I've heard many times that the garage is America's front door uh, in terms of uh, how most of us enter and exit our houses. And so whether it's leaving or arriving home, opening that door and seeing a mess is stressful or it can be stressful. So less mess, less stress, and uh, a solution will improve your lifestyle and maximize the space. So it's it's a win-win. You get to see something that's attractive and, and beautiful and clean and organized when you arrive home. Plus all of your stuff is where you know you put it and uh, it's easy to find and use. Now, there's a few areas that I think builders totally blow off, so to speak. One is landscaping, and the other is the garage. In fact, many of the houses I've moved into, a lot of times they don't even fully finish the garage. So it's almost like a blank canvas when you move in. Um, what kind of conditions do you see garages when you come into the process with people? So it varies. Uh, it can be, as you described, completely unfinished. So... Uh, depending on the climate, there can be, you know, insulation on just interior walls and perhaps sheetrock and, and, and taped and mud first coat on those walls in order to meet code with gas proofing. Um, to, you know, it's the whole, uh, room has been drywalled, but not finished well. Um, and then there's the extreme with the custom builders typically will finish it to, uh, a, a finished drywall stage, but then they leave it and uh, it may have a, a coat of primer on it. Uh, but you're right. I would agree with you that more often than not, builders, uh, whether it's subdivision homes or custom homes, don't pay much attention or enough attention to the garage space. And it's unfortunate because it's extremely valuable. It's a large open space that can be used for many purposes. And I would argue that most homeowners if you had to ask them, would say they would prefer it to be clean, organized, and finished rather than unfinished, disorganized, and dirty. Yeah, no, I would argue also that they aren't just ignoring it. 
I don't think they even take care of it. If you're not watching them, that's where they're storing all the paint and all the, the stuff during the build. So a lot of times the garage floor is in pretty bad shape once the homeowner gets there. So you must find those in some interesting conditions when you come in. Yeah, with new construction, we typically will see a concrete, an unfinished concrete floor that has paint on it from painting trim and painting doors and and moving in appliances and things like that. So they're not damaged typically in new construction, but they're definitely stained with paint and, and other chemicals that were used in the construction of the home. Now, when you do a garage like the one that's in the image behind you, for example, I live in Florida, and so the house is elevated to 10 feet, but the garage is down there at the, well, we're considering it, if we have a flood, that's what's going to be sacrificed. So how does that factor into how much money people should put into their garage or think about their garage? No, that's an excellent question. And what I would say to that is um, the products we use are extremely durable. So even in Florida, um, we don't use melamine cabinetry. Um, so if there is um, high humidity or flooding in the garage, uh, the product won't get wet. And if it does, it won't swell and start to mold. So our steel cabinetry lines are definitely superior to that of, of wood or uh, particle board that are, are often put in the, put in the garage by uh, homeowners. And so there, the longevity is there. And then, you know, you ask the question about sort of how does that play into what people should think about in spending in the garage? I mean, it's really an investment at that point. So if it's something that's going to last, uh, no different than hurricane shutters or hurricane glass uh, for your specific climate, I would argue that getting better quality product for the garage, knowing that you have those elements is well worth the money. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with you. What's always frustrating for me is by the time we start thinking about the garage, a lot of times we're going, gosh, we've spent all this money and we go, well, we'll do it later. But once you get to later, then you just keep kicking it down the road. What is it cost wise, starting from the minimum things you could do to a garage up to the I want the Taj Mahal of garages? Absolutely. So there is quite a range uh, based on what a homeowner needs. Um, I would say that, you know, some basic organization is probably in the two to $3,000 range. And then once you add a floor and potentially some cabinetry, you're in sort of the $10,000 range. And then depending on the size and the amount of product you need in terms of going um, all out, you can get upwards of $100,000. Um, it's really sky's the limit from there. But most of our projects are that average transformation that runs it runs between ten and twenty thousand dollars to complete a nice garage project now i know there's statistics from realtors and everything well if you put in a pool if you put in a hundred thousand dollar pool maybe you'll get thirty thousand more when you go sell your house what does having a nice finished garage do to the value of a house well again i think that the statistics probably are a little bit misleading in terms of what people say 100,000 versus 30,000. I think that that number is much higher than it was before COVID, to be honest. And now pools aren't seen as a, a negative. A pool is almost always a positive if you have one. Um, the garage space, uh, again, without a specific statistic as to the dollar value of return, I, I would say to you that most people would see value in a finished space. They may not say, well, that's where we would have 100% put our money, depending on what their their uh, lifestyle is like, but they would definitely feel that it's much more valuable than not having it. This wouldn't be like a pool, say, if you had young children, and it would be a detriment. There's only upside to having this space finished. So tell me about the most elaborate garage you've ever done, just so I can feel really even worse about mine. Um, yeah, we've what's done. It's the, the coolest <laughs> one. No, I was going to say, um, tell me the so coolest one. The coolest project I'd say we've done um, really was uh, built as part of a new build. So it was new construction. And so the architect was involved from the beginning. Um, it was like a subterranean garage. So it was underground that opened up into a large space. And and the homeowner, as, as um, uh, busy as they were, um, really you know had had uh, uh, an appreciation for cars and liked to wash his own cars so we installed a car washing station and there was cabinetry for 
uh, hobbies and things like that. And it was just, it wasn't that it was so spectacular with um, specific finishes. It was just that it was really built out with so many different elements that they really loved. So they had an area where they were using as a lounge and they had an area where they were using it for ping pong and they had an area for car washing. And so it really was everything you could imagine um, beneath the home. So it was quite, quite spectacular. Yeah, I noticed during um, COVID, a lot of people were putting a lot of gym equipment in their garages. Do you see that trend still continuing? Because then having that nice floor, having everything put away is, is even better if you're doing something like that. Are people still doing that? I would say that it's probably less common than it was during sort of the height of COVID in terms of installing gym equipment. I think m many people who were avid gym goers before have have returned to uh, the gyms outside the home. What I would say to, you know, the purpose of the garage as a gym is that our company doesn't sell gym equipment or, um, you know, uh, furniture for the garage. What we do is we focus on building out the space and the environment for a homeowner to choose what they want to do with the space. So whether that's putting gym equipment in or parking or having gym equipment and being able to park or putting a couch there so that, you know, friends can come over and watch a game. Um, we just create the clean, bright, uh, organized environment so that the homeowner can determine how they want to use the space. And even if they choose how they want to use it today, it can always be adjusted later on and it's very flexible so that they can uh, repurpose it down the road. Now, I also see a lot of people here where I live that can't even get their cars in their garage. So the garage is now turned into a storage shed, uh, maybe a workout room, all that stuff's in there. So their cars won't even go in there. Do you see that a lot where people are, are using the garage for things other than cars? Absolutely. I mean, I've been to a garage where someone had so many boxes and then they're like, well, the car, we need to store this car. And I was like, what car? Because it was literally covered with so much stuff that I didn't see it. It was small, it was a small, small convertible, but I couldn't see it. So yes, I mean, people have uh, accumulated so much stuff that uh, oftentimes storage space is, is very limited. And, and typically what we do when we go in for an in-home consultation, we'll talk to the clients about really what they can get rid of, whether that's disposing it, uh, do donating it, and then simply determining what they want to keep. And if they want to maximize the space and minimize the clutter, then oftentimes they'll purge a lot of items. And what's left is, is easily stored and easily organized so the space is valuable. But, you know, not keeping things that you don't use anymore and um, really donating or, or, or throwing away things that no longer have any value to you is oftentimes part of our discussion with our clients in order to make the most of their space and come up with a solution that really meets their needs. Now, I don't feel like we are hoarders, but when I walk out in my garage, I just see a bunch of stuff and I go, well, I might want to use that someday. Uh, I, do I want to sell this? Do I want to throw this away? Do I want to give this away? Give me some some suggestions of a starting point where I could walk out there and actually make a difference in getting rid of stuff because it frustrates me every time. I, I can honestly say it happens every day. If I could have a garage like the one that was behind you, I would do it tomorrow. Um, what could I do? What could the, the the regular person do that just wants to have a more livable space? Where do you I, start? I think you'd have to go through your stuff not as, as a starting point, like you said, and say, okay, you know, am I going to use this? Do I want to keep it because it has value to me? Or is it simply just something I don't know if I'm going to use down the line? And be somewhat brutal about it. Um, you know, you have limited space and you have to value that with, you know, the stress you feel when you go and look at it versus possibly having it down the line if you should need it. So you, you really have to balance that. And then the items that you do want to keep will put into, we can put into containers or we can put into other storage items that help you organize it. So it doesn't have to be all over the place. It can easily put, it can be put behind closed doors. It can be put on the wall. It can be put overhead, depending on the ceiling height of the garage. And then really, you know, it, it becomes an open space again that you can use, whether it's for parking, whether it's for working out, if you want to use it as a gym, um, or whether it's just for uh, having a nice clean space to arrive home to every day. Now, I see also a lot of homes 
around here that now have the the split garages part of the garage is on the right side of the house and part of it's on the left side of the house how does that factor into what you guys do uh it really doesn't i mean we uh, you know sometimes it can be you know one spouse uses one and another spouse uses another sometimes it can be for parking of a vehicle on one and a golf cart on another we see that often or uh, other times it can be like listen this is where all of our stuff is going to go and this is where you know, we're going to park and we're going to drive in and it's clutter free. So it really doesn't change our approach to the project. It simply just adds a, a layer of consideration as to what you want to use because you really have two separate spaces rather than one garage space. But it also opens up possibilities. So if, you, if you're um, saying to me as a client, I can't decide what I want to throw away and I can't decide what I need to keep or what I want to donate. Okay, well, let's take one space and literally make it clean and organized and bright and use the second as a storage unit and literally organize as best as you can in that. Or we do both spaces, but then that one's going to have the boxes that you still need to determine what you want to do with it. Yeah, I always get jealous with these new builds when I see them actually put more depth to the garage or there's more room on the sides as opposed to just squeezing a couple of cars in there. I imagine it's easier for you guys to come in if there actually was some thought into having space in the garage as opposed to just we maximized everything inside and we did the minimum with our garage. Absolutely. And we see that every day. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're you're buying a, a home off of plans in a subdivision or you're building a custom home. Architects and, and builders often don't uh, provide enough space uh, for the garage. So my suggestion would be is if you're, you know, working on uh, if you're drafting plans to build a home or you're reviewing plans to build a home, yeah, work to add two feet in depth and two feet in width because you'll enjoy the extra space once you have it. And, you know, it may take a little bit off of the inside. I mean, they always want to maximize the interior space, but really it's, it, it's not that practical if it's too tight to park, even though they call it a two-car garage, or you have no space in front or behind the, the cars when you pull them in and you really have no usable space Um when when everything's uh, completely full. Yeah, I don't think people really even think about that and, and they probably should because if you put a water softener in there, if you put, you know, you put some bike racks on the wall, pretty soon you're going, I can't even get a car in here. And it, it frustrates me that builders don't pay more attention to this and they're not advising people. So I encourage people to be their own best advocate. You have to be smart when you're buying or building a house and look at those things and don't reward somebody else's crappy job of building it. And if you're building it, keep these things in mind. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, most builders, especially ones that are doing pre-construction and, and, and uh, pre-planned uh, architecture, are just looking at maximizing the square footage of the house, which is not including the garage typically. So um, they really don't put enough attention and they don't make enough consideration for that space you would need to use it um, once they have a purchaser or buyer. So uh, if you're your own advocate, yes, I would reconsider the size of it. Consider adding two feet in depth and two feet in width because it'll make the world of difference when you want to actually use the space. And you really can't go back and ask for that later. You got one shot. You, you can't add a couple feet. I know it's, it, it's frustrating. Um, there's there, gosh, there's so many things when I look at that picture that I want. Uh, but probably not going to happen today. Aaron, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'm jealous of anybody that has a nice garage and uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. It was great to uh, talk to you today. Thank you for joining me today on the Tell Us How to Make a Better podcast. All of Aaron's contact information is in the show notes and all my contact information is there as well. And if you enjoyed what you were listening to, please become a subscriber, share the link with somebody and even leave a review. There's also a contact form so if you have an interesting building or remodeling story that you'd like to share, fill out the contact form, let me know, and I'd love to have you as a guest on the podcast. There's also a link to my documentary film, The Last House Standing, and I hope you'll check that out. Thanks again for listening. See you next time.